Hey Java developers, exciting news. The JDK release is less than a week away, happening on March 18th. In fact, we will be live streaming it when it becomes available from Java 1. I hope to see you there in person, but if you can't make it, join us on our live stream. You can follow this link to get a notification when we go live. Also on the subject of announcement, this video goes live on my birthday. However, I'm not gonna tell you what's won. Maybe leave a guess in the comments, points if you find a way to make me cry. That said, join me, Billy Carando, Java developer advocate, as we go through the JDK24 release notes for developers. I am continually tweaking this release notes videos. This time I'm breaking it up to three videos, each focusing on different user groups, developers with this video, operation folks, and security. The next two videos will be published in the next few days. Our channel will be very busy with all the content coming out of Java 1, so the actual release schedule is a bit up in the air. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of it. Also, in the bottom right of the screen is the JEP R JBS Java Bug System Issue ID. There is also a link in the description to the JEP and JBS homepages for an easy look on a change you might be interested in learning more about. With that said, let's get started. We have already covered most of the JEPs, JDK enhancement proposals, coming in JDK24 in other videos, so I'll only give a brief summary here, but I'll be sure to provide links so you can learn more about each JEP in the description and on screen. JEP 484 finalizes the class file API. Most developers won't interact with the class file API, but this should make the process of updating past JDK24 even easier. On the other hand, you will likely use stream gatherers, which are being finalized with JEP 485. Gatherers provide a new intermediate operation to streams that give developers considerable freedom and transformation of data coming into and out of a gatherer. The title for JEP 472, Prepare to Restrict the Use of JNI, is a bit confusing as it also applies to the new FFM API. The goal is to ensure both APIs help prevent developers from doing risky behavior when performing interoperability with native code. The goal of these and other similar JEPs is towards providing better integrity by default on the Java platform. All the relevant info on this is in the description. JEP 498, warned upon use of memory access methods in Sun Misc Unsafe, will issue a warning the first time a memory access method in Sun Misc Unsafe is used. Alternative to these methods exists, it's strongly encouraged for library developers to migrate to these alternatives. JEP 487 re-previews scope values for the fourth and hopefully final time. Scope values work in that same niche as thread local. For more on this, watch this video from Nikolai. Primitives, types, and patterns is in second preview with JEP 488. As the name suggests, this allows primitives, int, boolean, byte, long, etc. to be used in pattern matching without needing to be wrapped in a reference type. There have been no changes in this preview round. JEP 492 is the third preview of flexible constructor bodies. This allows for statements before the call to super, are, this, and a constructor. No significant changes included in this preview round. Module Import Declaration enters second preview with JEP 494. This feature allows for the importing of an entire module's exported packages with a single line, like in this example. A few minor changes were made in this preview, some tweaking around transitive dependencies and use sheets of shadow imports. Check the JEP for details. Simple source files and instance main methods will be in fourth preview with JEP 495. This is the paving the on-ramp JEP, which aims to make writing trivial Java applications easier and improving the process of learning Java. Though many of these changes could also be useful for scripting purposes. Be sure to check out the dis this discussion on the upcoming JEP on this feature as well, as the goal is to finalize in JDK 25. JEP 499 re-previews the Structured Concurrency API. However, this is a bit of a punt. There's a new Structured Concurrency API in the works that addresses issues raised from feedback. Initially, the hope was to include this new API in JDK 24 release, but alas, because of the size of JDK 24, this update API was not included. The new API should hopefully be part of the JDK 25 release. Lastly, Vector API enters ninth incubator with JEP 489, where it will remain pending the promotion of Valhalla features. There are a number of new features added for developers in JDK 24. 
A new static factory method Java IO reader of char sequence has been added to get a reader that reads char characters from char sequence, which would cover objects like string and string builder. This reader is more efficient than Java IO string reader in some cases, as the latter requires conversion to string and synchronization. JDK24 supports Unicode 16, which adds nearly 5,200 new characters, including seven new scripts. And I'm not going to I'm going to avoid saying them as I was butchering their pronunciation while preparing the script. There are also updates to the Java Text BIDI and Normalizer classes, and the Java Util Regex package to support Unicode 16. Be sure to check Unicode 16 release notes for additional details. A new overloaded method wait for duration has been added to the Java Lang process. This existing wait for method where timeout needs both a primitive timeout value and its unit. The new method uses Java time duration so that the user will not be confused with the unit. These new methods have been added to the Sun Reflect Reflection Factory, which can be used by libraries for implementing customized serialization behavior. Sun Reflect Reflection Factory is an undocumented API located in the JDK unsupported module. It serves as a stopgap for custom serialization that would otherwise need to break encapsulation to access inaccessible fields. The only removed feature that would be relevant to developers is that the compatibility behavior introduced in JDK 1.1 for EST, MST, and HST has been removed. This behavior is controlled by the Sun Time Zone IDS old mapping system property, which is now a no op. There are several notable bugs that have been resolved in JDK 24. The method Java Lane constant method type desk resolve constant desk will now throw a class not found exception to conform to the JDK specification. Code that was handling type not present exception can now merge the behavior into the reflective operation catch. Previously, reflectively invoking var handle signature polymorphic methods through an unsatisfied link error. It will now throw an unsupported exception conforming to the JDK specification. Core reflection now throws a type not present exception instead of substituting a null value when encountering an undefined type variable in a generic signature. The previously incorrect behavior had been in place since the addition of, of generic signatures in JDK5. The type not present exception type name method may return type variable names in addition to fully qualified names of classes. Number format has two subclasses, decimal format and compact number format. Previously, in cases when decimal format was returned by a static factory method, it would fail to correctly parse values that contain a decimal symbol and is parse integer only would return true. This code snippet is an example of when a parse exception would have been thrown but would now return a value in this example 5. There are a few other noteworthy changes in JDK24. Many of these are minor behavior changes. Java.net.http HTTP client would previously time out if a server didn't respond to a request which included an expect 100 continue header. This release updates HTTP client to send the request body if the server doesn't respond and brings the implementation in line with RFC 9110. The connect methods defined by java.net.socket are now specified and changed to close the socket if the connection cannot be established or timeout if provided expires before the connection is established. The behavior in previous JDK releases was to close the underlying socket when a connection could not be established, but leave the socket open. The resulting socket was useless as most methods behaved as if the socket was closed. Check the JBS issue for more details. Prior to JDK24, if a java.net authenticator is set on an HTTP client, then any user set authorization and proxy authorization headers would be removed or overwritten by values generated by a client library. From JDK24, if such headers are set by the user, then they will be left in place and the authenticator will not be invoked for the respective header. In particular, if the authentication fails for the provided header, the failed response will be 401 or 407. One, can use, one use case for this could be to let the authenticator handle proxy authentication and for the user to set the authorization headers for the server. 
the java.net.http client will now report HTTP2 flow control errors to the server when they are detected. This is an implementation detail that shouldn't be transparent to users of the HTTP client API, but could result in streams being reset or connections being closed if they're connecting to a non-conformant HTTP2 server. The IANA time zone database has been upgraded to 2024B. This version mainly includes changes to improve historical data from Mexico, Mongolia, and Portugal. Though there are a few changes, so check the JBS ticket if interested. The CLDR locale data has been upgraded to version 46. Besides the usual addition of new locale data and the translation changes, there are notable changes from the upstream CLDR affecting date, time, number, formatting shown here. As a reminder, locale data is subject to change with every release and Java users should not assume stability across releases. For additional details, check the Unicode Consortium's CLDR release notes, link in the description. The default value of the property for XSLT and XPath extension functions, JDK.XML enable extension functions, has been changed from true to false. This disables extension functions. For applications that require extension functions, the solution is to set the property to true. Check the JBS ticket for additional details on this change. The JDK XML processing limit, aka jack speed limits, has been reduced to 2500 to be more in line with general applications. In, a in particular, the default values of the limits are tuned down to be more closely aligned with known DTDs. This limit can be adjusted setting the JDK XML entity expansion limit in code, in code like in this example, or through a jack speed configuration file or command line argument. Check the JBS ticket for additional details on this change. While refactoring Java C to support JEP 492, some existing problems were exposed. For example, the following code snippet would compile, but executing the class file for class O throws an internal exception trying to create the instance at position A. In Java 24, Java C would now throw a compile time error. Check the JBS ticket for other examples of updates to Java C. Lambda expressions and method references are sometimes translated as methods by the Java C compiler. As of this release, the name of the generated methods for non-serializable lambdas and method references have been updated, which might be visible when inspecting the content of a class containing non-serializable lambdas and method references using core reflection. Additionally, the enclosing method attribute for local and anonymous classes declared inside Lambda Expressions has been fixed to be compliant with JVMS 477. This code example will now print null instead of the enclosing method of enter. All right, that's all the noteworthy changes for developers. We have a lot of great content lined up for the next few weeks. We will have our Java 1 live streams, recording of presentations from Java 1, more content on JDK24, including my two other release note videos, and a whole lot more. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Until next time, happy coding!